What is going on guys? My name is Kyle. I'm with High Point Scientific and today we're going to be going over another post-processing tutorial and today we'll be talking about how to create a beautiful image of the planets with your own data. Now we're going to be looking at data taken through my 8-inch F6 Dobsonian telescope that I have over my shoulder right there taken with my ZWO224MC camera. Now before I begin the post-processing tutorial, I want to say that this is not the only way to approach processing a video or an image like this. There are many other different ways. So I'm just going to be going over the way I prefer to do it and the way I find uh, easiest for me. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into the post-processing tutorial. Alrighty, so our first step today in this post-processing tutorial will be to get our video ready for stacking. And what we're going to do is use a program called PIP. Now PIP is an absolutely fantastic free resource for anybody to use that will do things like debayer your video for you. It will look through the video file and find the best quality frames for you to stack as well as convert your video file to something that's a little higher quality. So it's an absolutely free, fantastic piece of software that I cannot recommend enough. So what we're going to do is load up our video file of Jupiter here. And if you look closely, you can actually see a black dot in the center of the face of Jupiter. And that is in fact the moon Io as it transits across the face of Jupiter. So I was super lucky to be able to capture this in real time. Now looking at this, the first thing you might notice is, wait a minute, Kyle, where's the color? And that's a good question. The color data is actually there, but what we need to do is do a process called debayering to the video. So what we're going to do next is load pip up and then we're going to drop the video file into the image file list. You'll get a dialog box in that option, excuse me, that comes up and it says you want to convert this to the correct bear pattern and you want to click yes. So now you can see we have our color data there. It has resolved it for us and we're going to exit out of that. And then we're going to go down to optimize options four, and you're going to want to make sure plant area is checked. Then you're going to want to go over to input options, review all of these. Uh, I don't think any of this needs to be adjusted. Then we're going to go to processing options, and then we're going to go through all of this. Monochrome conversion. If you have convert color to monochrome, you want to leave that unchecked. The reason for that is we want to actually have a color image at the end of this. And by leaving this checked, you'll get no color in your image. Uh, we don't adjust any of this. Frame stabilization mode, you're want, going to want to leave object plus planetary checked. Object detection, you're going to want to leave that uh, checked. Detection threshold, you don't need to mess with that. You want to leave center object in each frame checked. And what that will do is we'll keep Jupiter dead center in the middle of the image instead of bouncing around like it was due to the, my mount's tracking. Cropping, you're going to want to leave enable cropping uh, checked and that will produce an image that is 448 pixels by 448 pixels. Then we're going to go over to quality options and what we're going to do under quality estimation is check mark enable quality estimation. And then we're going to want to leave reorder frames in quality order checked. So what that's going to do is it's going to look through the entire video find the best quality video frames and then make that first and then rank them in descending order. So that's something that's super useful and will enable you to get a higher quality image. And then we're gonna go over to quality limiting and then we're gonna leave checked only keep the best quality frames. And then we're gonna go over to source files and then we're gonna see how many frames we actually have. Now that we, we can see we have 5,000 frames and that's good. But we don't want to stack all of them. We only want to stack the best 75% or so. So what I'm going to do is actually change this from 1,200 frames to about 4,000 frames, keeping in mind the more frames the better. And then we're going to go over to animation options. And then we're going to, we're not making animation, so we don't have to worry about this. And then output options. 
So I'm actually going to output this as a .ser file because I find that to be a little higher quality. We're going to want to keep the output directory as default, and then we're going to want to create a subdirectory. And other than that, you don't have to touch any of this stuff. You don't have to worry about WinJupos or anything like that. And then after you get all of that done, what you're want, going to want to do is click Start Processing. So this is going to take a few minutes to actually process all 5,000 frames and then sort each of the frames by quality. So what we're going to do is pause the video and come back for our next part. So Pip has finished up and we've opened up our folder with our processed uh, video ready to go. And so we're actually going to drag that into a program called AutoStacker. Now AutoStacker is a free piece of software that will enable us to actually stack an image for us to sharpen. So we're going to open up AutoStacker, just give it a minute, and then we're going to drag and drop the uh, video file right here. And as you can see, we have a nice view of the planet Jupiter. And again, we have about 4,000 frames here that we need to stack. But let's go over the recommended settings here. We're gonna go under image stabilization. We're gonna leave this checked as planet. And we're gonna leave dynamic background check. Uh, we're gonna keep quality estimator as is. And then we're going to press analyze. And what this is going to do is find us the best image here for us to use as a reference frame for all the frames to stack onto. So that's just going to take a moment. It's gonna take a bit of a moment because there's over 4,000 frames for it to process. Alrighty, so that has finished up, and as you can see, we have a graph sort of in descending order from best to worst, showing us which our best frames are and which is our worst frame. Now, Pip actually went ahead and already told us which frame was the best, so we have that in first, and then we have that all the way in descending order to the least, uh, the least favorable. So what we're going to do is go over to stack options. We're going to leave it checked as a .tif file as our output file and then we're gonna have 90% of these frames stacked. And then we're gonna leave this all checked. And then we're not gonna to touch drizzling because uh, I personally don't really find drizzling very useful, but if you like to do drizzling, you certainly can. And then we're gonna go over to our video here, and then we're gonna go down to AP size or alignment point size, and then we're gonna leave it checked as 24. And what that's going to do is that's going to drop um, hundreds, uh, 404 to be specific alignment points. And what alignment points do is they're points where the software knows to align all the frames to. So the more points you have, the better, and especially for planets. Plus the video files are pretty small, so you can afford to drop a lot of them on there. So what we're going to do now is go under advanced settings and then click stack. And this is going to actually stack our image for us. And this is going to take quite a while. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here and then come on back to our post-processing. Okay, so AutoStackert has finished up its job and we are left with a beautiful stacked, sharpened, well not sharpened yet, but a beautiful stacked image of the planet Jupiter. Now, I talked a bit about stacking and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I wanna mention it before I go any further about why we stack. And the reason we stack all these video frames is because it increases what's called the SNR or signal to noise ratio, signal to noise, excuse me. So that just simply means the more frames you stack, the more signal you get and the less noise you get as a result. So if you remember the earlier video, you'll remember that the image was actually kind of noisy, but by stacking tons and tons of frames from that video, we get a final image that is much smoother and much cleaner looking and ready for sharpening. So what we're going to do is load this video, this image into a program called Registax. Now Registax, like all the pieces of software that I've been using for this video, are completely free to use, fantastic, and will be left in the description for you to be able to download. So what we're going to do is click Select, and then we're gonna open our image. We're gonna click Yes to stretch intensity levels. And that's going to take us to our wavelets. And our wavelets are where we'll actually do some more sharpening to be able to increase the detail on the image of Jupiter. So we're gonna click show full image. Then we're gonna go down here under wavelets and you're gonna find a bunch of rows where you can adjust 
the wavelet. So we're going to start with layer one. Most of your details can be in layer one or layer two, but we're going to adjust all of these. Just bring these up a little bit. And you can definitely see already we're getting a much sharper view of Jupiter. We'll just layer three a little bit, layer four as well, layer five, and then layer six. So my recommendation for the for these wavelets is when it comes to your image is to just play around and see what you can get. But again, most of your data is going to be in the first two wavelets. So we're going to click do all. So we're here is our sharpened view of Jupiter, but the color balance isn't exactly right. It isn't exactly what we're used to seeing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to under functions here. We're going to go down to RGB balance and then you're going to click auto balance. And what this has done is has automatically balanced the RGB channels so that we can get a more natural uh, white balance. And as you can see, we're left with a much better image of Jupiter. One thing I like to do, although it's not necessarily needed for this image because the RGB channels are pretty well aligned, but if you have a situation where you're recording and you have really bad seeing, using the RGB alignment tool helps align those channels because the seeing can actually distort those three channels. So we're going to click, uh, we created a box here, and then we're going to create estimate. And what this is going to do is going to estimate the sort of alignment between the three channels and see if there's any improvement. I don't think there's going to be that much of improvement because the seeing this night was fantastic. So let's see what we get here. And this is going to take just a few moments while it processes this image. Alrighty, and that has finished up. Didn't really do much, but again, didn't really need it, but if you have a situation where you're recording and there's really bad seeing, the RGB alignment tool is super, super useful. And at this point, what you're looking at is a final image. This is an image I'm really happy with, and I think if you got to this point, you'd be pretty happy with as well. And I think this looks really, really good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about how to process your video of the planets in the night sky. Again, this is not the only way you have to approach this uh, subject. There are different ways to process your planetary astrophotography. This is simply the way I prefer to do it. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend checking out our most recent video on planetary imaging with the Celestron Nexstar 8IC that was posted by Tegan. It is an absolutely fantastic resource on planetary imaging. Again, my name is Kyle. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and always remember to keep looking up. Thank you.